All right, we're here with uh, Trey Edward Schultz. Is that how you say your last name? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Indeed. Um, he's the director and writer of Waves. And I want to ask you, going from Krisha to to It Comes at Night to Waves, what was the journey like for these three stories that put you here today? Ooh, great question. Um, I mean, I will say it feels like a constant evolution, you know? Uh, and um, we would talk about it felt like it was all kind of leading to this movie. So... Um, I don't know. Uh, it just, uh, it was a progression, you know, and it was amazing going for, from, from everything from creative to practical, uh, going from those movies to this one is it's yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. Um, you cast, cast Kelvin, uh, Harrison Jr. In this part who was also in it comes at night. Yeah. What made him special for the part of Tyler? Uh, good question. We basically, when we worked together on it comes at night, we loved each other wanted to work together again. I had rough ideas for this, like an outline. Um, didn't have character names yet or a title, but we wanted to figure out how to work together again. So, uh, and I wanted to tailor the role specifically for him. So even while I was writing this, we were collaborating. We were, um, we call them mini therapy sessions. We, we were doing text messages and phone calls and talking about that time in our lives, you know, and relationships uh, with our parents, with uh, lovers or siblings and uh, pressures uh, from school and everything else from the world, uh, commonalities and differences in our experiences and everything in between. So it was really amazing. So as I was writing, we were doing that um, so the movie is very personal as well, but it was like drawing on the personal and infusing Kelvin's perspective with that on everything. Then he got a script like eight months before we started shooting. He would give me notes. I would go back to writing again. And uh, yeah, so I, I attributed a lot of this really clicking into place to that relationship with Kelvin. Um, and um, he's an amazing human being. He's incredibly talented. He can't do a scene without feeling like he's put all his whole heart and soul and it's just real and honest mm -hmm. and he's so so smart and intelligent so i don't know i love kel he's like a brother to me yeah so will he be in future movies of absolutely yours? <laughs> I, I, I just want to make movies with him a leo dicaprio like kind of relationship where he's in like every single movie <laughs> i hope so i hope so sometimes you just find those actors or yeah. those people you really click with and you just want them to be a part of like everything absolutely um, so you also had like Sterling K. Brown, Lucas Hedges, Taylor Russell, who was amazing in this. She's incredible. Um, and Alexa Demi, yeah. if I'm saying that last name. Um, what was the casting like for the rest of, of this film? Um, it was, uh, it, it would vary for everyone. Um, it, but I did, at a base level, it started with Cal and it started with trust and we love each other and want to make something special together. So I just wanted to find, you know, very talented people that felt a connection with and they felt like good human beings. So whether that was reaching out to Sterling K. Brown and like sending a script and trying to talk to him on the phone or um, to Alexa and Taylor just traditionally auditioning um, and then Skyping with them and getting a vibe mm -hmm. for what they were like, uh, it was a really, really beautiful experience. So everyone kind of came at it in a different way. Um, but I really like just wanted crazy talented people that um, felt like good human beings and we jived, you know. Yeah, and you've got like two great films to back up kind of your resume. Oh, yeah. So it's not like Thank you're you. an indie like guy anymore and you can actually get the attention of some of these people now. Which was really amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, was Alexa cast? before you saw Euphoria? Yeah, indeed. I mean, we shot it before Euphoria was Oh, shot. really? Yeah. So indeed. that's really her, her first big project is Waves, but before so. it came out. Euphoria came out first, though. That yeah. Was, was a star. <laughs> Man, that, that series is like one of my favorites. It's great. Um, so how did you get Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross to do the score? I mean, that's yeah. big time. Amen. Uh, again, just very lucky. Uh, I got one of the coolest emails of my life. Trent's agents reached out saying Trent Reznor is a fan and wants to meet. And wow. then I jumped on a plane and went to LA and had lunch with Trent and Atticus. And uh, <laughs> it was amazing. How amazing is that? Like, it's nuts. I just. <laughs> this is nuts. Like, those are the pinch yourself. Like, how is this happening? Right yes. Now? And it did, but the amazing thing is that what I mean, I was nervous to have yeah. lunch with them, but like what, as soon as we were there and like talking, it was like, oh my, it feels like I've already known y'all and the energy is natural mm -hmm. and great. And they said they love the other movies. And at the time I was writing waves. So, 
Um, I started telling them about it and said I'd have a script to show them soon. Uh, and I was terrified when I sent them the script because it had like 40 songs embedded in it. And yeah. none of it was Nine Inch Nails <laughs> or Trinaticus' stuff. So I was like, you know, are they going to be like, where the hell do we fit into this? What yeah. is their reaction going to be? And it was the opposite. They like really, really loved the script and were excited to figure out where they fit into it. And uh, yeah. So you already had the songs kind of like picked out and everything, or did they have input in that as well? Uh, pretty much, um, all, yeah, almost all the songs were actually embedded in the script to where you could press play and listen to them oh, nice. as they were going. Because I just wanted people to uh, get how important music was going to be to the ebb and flow of it. And just for the creative, music opens you up, you know? Mm -hmm. So like to have that as you're reading, I think, would affect certain pe people emotionally in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being a young filmmaker, younger than me at least, um, <laughs> what advice would you give to other young filmmakers who are trying to get out, get to the level of achievement you have at this point in your life? To me, it's, uh, I always think it's like two things really. It's, uh, it's drive, just not giving up at all and continuing to make stuff, you know, and keeping that drive, but also with the purpose, trying to make stuff and keep that drive to find, um, to find you, to find your own voice and your unique take to bring to something because no one else is going to mess with that. Yeah. And that's going to separate you from everyone else because no one else is you. So just keeping that drive and finding you, you'll be good. I mean, did you imagine when you're this age, you're going to be at this level? I, it was the dream. It was Dreams the dream. don't usually yeah. happen. <laughs> I mean, maybe when you're like 50. Yeah, like... exactly. Well, that I had the mind state like, I'm just not going to give up. If that means I'm not successful till I'm 50, I'm just going to keep yeah, at it and not yeah. give up. So luckily I, I got it. I got a little bit of a head start, but yeah. How integral was South by Southwest to it your career? Changed my life. It completely changed my life. Yeah. It started with the short when they took the Carisha short film in. That gave a, that was the first time a legit festival had taken anything I'd done. And that gave me motivation to um, to do the feature version of that movie. Mm -hmm. And we did a small Kickstarter campaign, and then raised the rest of our money of the money ourselves. And then um, the year the Creature feature played South by Southwest literally changed my life. It yeah. was one of the craziest weeks of my life. And I mean, ever since then, I've just been like in a sprint trying to make these movies before I'm yeah. not allowed to. You know? Yeah. <laughs> How being on uh, trying to get into the festival circuit, I have I know friends that have it's hard yeah. to get into certain ones, yeah. uh, especially big ones like South by Southwest. What 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 was your take on or your experience with trying to get into such a major fest? Yeah, well, um, it, it was funny for I even had I had worked on a Jeff Nichols movie and uh, he was such a sweetheart. He took my short film and sent it to Sundance. So I was wow. like, I'm getting in, right? And Sundance rejected me. And then South by Southwest, I submitted blind with nothing. And then they took it. Wow. So the weird thing is that there's no per per perfect proper path. I think, I think it's just submitting. Like, and it's annoying, like paying these fees and mm -hmm. going through everything and submitting. But like, if you just keep pushing and doing work that's distinctly you, it's going to stand out in this. So whether you're submitting and doing all this stuff, you're... There are, I know Shores programmers, I know feature programmers, they're watching all this stuff. So the more distinct and original and you, your thing is, it's going to shine through everything else. And then once you get in, you just get your end. You get into one of these festivals and that's the beginning of everything that's going to change, I think, you know. And then yeah. you're going to bit new relationships, you know, and get into other festivals and, and more new relationships. And that, that's how it was for me. Yeah. Um, the story, I, I waves. Speaking specifically, I mean, it's it it went one way, and I was like, "Oh, this is the story," <laughs> and then something happens, and it goes, you know, darker. You know, it has yeah. like a segue, and then it goes into the daughter's um, story, and it, it was very um, unexpected. I was like, "Okay, this is the end of the film." No, okay, <laughs> we're going a whole n another way. Yeah. Um, how did you kind of try to set that up? I mean, was that your intent to always kind of tell the story in that direction? Yeah, uh, I think for a lot of reasons. One, just at a base level, I, I'm ultimately trying to hopefully make unique movies that feel different and feel because nothing makes more me more excited than when I'm connecting with a movie that I feel like, whoa, this is different. I haven't yeah. seen this before. So that's kind of a base level. There's a lot of creative stuff, you know. I really thought this movie to me kind of works in dichotomies mm -hmm. in terms of highs and lows 
lows and um, highs and lows of life and love and everything in between. And I thought that would be really fascinating to split the movie in halves, like yin and yang between mm -hmm. brother and sister um, and different viewpoints, masculine and feminine. And, oh, yeah. Um, all of that kind of coming into play combined with and then there's just like a spiritual feeling of um, I've, you know, gotten through some some hard things in life and then um, life's unpredictable like a hard thing will happen and then the pace will change and the tone will change and I almost wanted the movie to feel like a panic attack seizing in uh, but then it but then you have that panic attack and then it gives you a hug and you want to yeah. kind of sort stuff out and try to heal and understand from it so all of that stuff's kind of wrapped into why I was so excited to kind of make it this two-part diptych structure you know yeah. Well, thank you so much for speaking with thank me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Two hundred thousand can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.